is my and welcome to my kitchen. So today I'm going to show you guys how to recreate black star pastries, very Instagram famous strawberry and watermelon cake. Now the first time I saw this cake, I was completely blown away by the way it looks. It's such a beautiful cake and it also combines my favorite fruit, which is watermelon as a core ingredient, which I've never heard about watermelon cake before. So I've decided to recreate it at home using my simple home cooking methods. And yeah, I'm going to show you guys how I've done it and hopefully you guys will find it useful as well. Now if you enjoyed this video, remember to hit like and also subscribe. And yeah, I'll catch you guys later. For this cake, we're going to create a almond and meringue based sponge. So we're going to start by separating the egg whites from the egg yolks. At this point, you'll also want to preheat the oven at 180 degrees Celsius. In a large bowl, begin to mix the egg whites. When it starts foaming up, gradually add the sugar and mix until you get firm peaks. In a separate bowl, combine the icing sugar and the ground almond together. Then, gradually fold this mixture into the egg whites until you get a lava-like consistency. Once done, I like to load it into a piping bag just so that it makes it easier for the next step. Prepare a line baking tray and trace the shape of the cake using the mold that we're going to use. For reference, I've used a 18cm square mold for this video. Pipe the dequas mix following the outline that you've just drawn. You actually don't need to be super precise or even use a piping bag for this exercise. I've previously also just used a spatula to spread the mix onto a line baking tray and cut the shape that I wanted after it's been baked. You'll see what I mean later on. Once I've finished piping, I also like to use a spatula to even out the surface. We're now going to bake the dequas for 15 minutes in the oven until the top becomes slightly golden. Now to the fun part, cutting the watermelon. So this is the point where if you're smart, you'll go for a large seedless watermelon that will allow you to easily carve out the shape of your mold just from a single slice. However, I like to make my life more difficult than it should be and went for a quarter of a watermelon instead. So what I did was to cut several slices of equal thickness of about 1 to 1.5 centimeters, then cut and shuffle things around until everything fits. It won't be as perfect as having one single slice, but it does the job and will still look great in the end, I promise. Once you've got your watermelon slices, we're going to macerate them with rose water and sugar. Generously cover both sides of the watermelon with some sugar and rose water and leave it to rest for 15 minutes. Now this is an extra step but I also used a toothpick to remove the watermelon seeds from my slices. Next up, we're going to prepare the rose scented cream. We're going to start by mixing some gelatin powder into some water. I'm using vegetarian gelatin powder for this recipe. Let the gelatin bloom for a few minutes. Then we're going to heat it up for about 30 seconds in the microwave. It should now have a nice smooth jelly-like consistency. Pour in the rose water, gently mix and set aside. We're going to start mixing the cream and sugar together until we get some firm peaks. Add in the gelatin, then mix for about 15 seconds until you get a thicker consistency. Remember to stop before the cream goes grainy. Once done, load it into a piping bag. Now we're going to prepare the toppings. First off, I'm going to soak the pistachio kernels in hot water for about 10 minutes. 
Meanwhile, I'm going to slice my fresh strawberries into halves. Make sure you get enough strawberries to cover the entire surface of the cake. Now, back to the pistachios. The hot water would have loosened up the skin, so we're going to remove the skin from the pistachio kernels. Then, using a knife, we're going to cut the pistachio kernels into small slices. If you find this process to be too time consuming, you can simply just buy these pre-sliced or just crush some dried pistachio instead. Let's now assemble everything together. For this cake, we'll need two layers of almond dacquoise. Remember what I told you about cutting the shape of the dacquoise previously? Using the cake mold, I'm going to carve out two layers of the almond dacquoise that we've previously baked for this cake. Transfer the first layer of the dacquoise onto a plate. This will be the base of our cake. We're then going to place the mold that's lined with some acetate on top and then we're going to start layering. Pipe a layer of your rose scented cream on top of the almond d'aquoise. I've used a piping bag with a white nozzle just to make this much simpler. The next layer is the watermelon. Now, we're going to use some kitchen towel to blot out the excess moisture from the watermelon slices and then we're going to place them on top of our rose scented cream. Once done, we're going to add another layer of the rose scented cream on top of the watermelon slices. Next up is our second layer of almond d'aquoise. We're going to slide it on top of the rose scented cream. Give it a gentle press at the end just to make sure that everything is set and stable. Then we're going to use a spatula to add a thin layer of rose scented cream which we will use as the base for our toppings. Once that's done, we're going to start by placing our strawberries on top of the rose scented cream, alternating the front and back side of the strawberries, making sure that it covers the entire surface of the cake. This step is optional, but I like to create a shiny glaze for my strawberries just by heating up some jam and some water and let that reduce until you get a sort of liquid and smooth consistency. This is such a small step, but it'll make your cake look way more professional. We're now going to cover the strawberries with the glaze that we've just prepared with a brush just to make sure that we can get into all the small corners. Then, we're going to generously sprinkle the slivered pistachios just to give it a nice pop of green colour. And finally, finishing off with a sprinkle of dried rose petals. And that's it guys! Now it's time to plate up. It's now time for the taste test. I'd never thought that watermelon could work so well in a cake, but it actually gives a really pleasant crunchy texture and a fresh taste that balances out really well with the other soft creamy layers. The cake itself is really light and not too sweet. I think that the rose water works really well with the cream and the watermelon. It's not too overpowering, it's kind of got like this floral note which is so enjoyable to eat. 
So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys find this video useful. Now, if you enjoyed this video, remember to hit like and also subscribe. And if you're already a subscriber, remember to hit the bell button so that you can know when my next video is coming up. So yeah, see you guys next time. Bye.